So I wanted to take a few minutes here and make a quick video on how I use VS Code for Python development. Um, we're going to cover launching Python files um, via the uh, via the keyboard shortcuts, as well as TensorBoard, uh, using ChatGPT integration via Genie AI, um, some random tips and tricks for moving around the editor more quickly, um, as well as how to work with Git in VS Code. So right off the bat, uh, you'll notice that I'm, I'm not actually in VS Code yet. I am uh, on the command line, and that is actually where I would usually start. So I'm going to clone down. I always start with a repo. I'm going to clone down uh, my VS Code template project, which you'll notice is empty so far. So, and then uh, I'm also going to go ahead and set up a conda environment. Uh, so I'm going to do conda create dash n vs code template python and then python equals 3.11 and that'll get our conda environment set up this does take a couple of minutes okay so now i have a conda environment and i have a uh, you know, a Git repo downloaded. So let's go into it. And if you haven't used it before, uh, you can actually launch VS Code on the command line from code dot once it's installed. So I'm just gonna hit code and the directory I want to launch it in. And it's going to launch it in our present directory here. Let me drag it over. All right, so now we have our, our VS Code editor up. So the first thing you need to do, if you uh, haven't already, is you need to go and install the Python extension pack from Microsoft. Um, you'll see if you just come over here to extensions and type Python, you'll, uh, you'll see this option here. Click on it, install. That's going to give you all of the default Python tooling. Um, in VS Code, the fastest way to get around is usually the command palette. So the command palette can be opened with Control shift p and that's going to give you um, your default or your, your set of commands that are available to you, both from the default editor and then the, uh, the plugins you have installed. So what I'm going to do here is uh, first set up our Python interpreter. So started typing Python. My second option here is select interpreter, uh, mostly because it's filtering by recently used. If you need to go all the way, you would just finish typing and then you can do select interpreter here. Um, in my case, I've recently played with this, so it gives me VS Code Template Python as an option here. Um, if you don't see what you're looking for here, you would uh, click, you know, Enter Interpreter Path, and then you would give it the path to the Python script or the Python executable inside of your Anaconda environment. So, all right, so we now have um, a default Python interpreter configured. Let's do a new file, and we're gonna call it main.py, and I'm just going to print hello world. All right, and we'll go ahead and run it here and just make sure that it works. All right, cool, so hello world is now um, functional. So, you know, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna to get to where I don't have to click on things. Um, that, is, that is a general goal for me inside of an IDE is being able to quickly use keyboard shortcuts uh, to get around instead of having to you know, come up here and, you know, hey, I'm typing, and now I've gotta take my hand off the keyboard and come click, click things. Uh, it does slow down your workflow. So there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, you can shortcut the run Python file uh, option here, and that's simple enough to do. Uh, you can also set a default build step. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the shortcut. So again, Control Shift P. That's P as in Paul to open up the uh, the command editor here, and it's going to be preferences, open keyboard shortcuts is what you're looking for. Now, once you're in here, uh, start typing Python or you know whatever you're trying to find. In my case, it's Python. And the option, the, the task you're looking for is run Python file and dedicated terminal. 
So we're using dedicated terminal because I want to be able to run many scripts at the same time without them stepping on each other. And you'll notice mine already has a key binding next to it. Uh, yours won't, probably, unless you've done this before. Uh, double click here, and then you can just type your key binding. In my case, I want it to be control plus D and enter. So now if I close this out and come back over here, I can hit control D and I have um, my hello world. So let's go ahead and copy main pi to secondary.py. We'll open up secondary.py and I'm going to change this to hello world from secondary and save. And then again, to run this one, now that I'm sitting on secondary, control D. Um, but let's say you've got a larger project. Maybe you've got um, a, I'm just gonna call this random class.py. We're gonna call it class random class. And throw an init function out there with a pass. And you'll notice it just did some cool autocomplete stuff there for me. Um, it built out my init function, you know, just like your, your standard Python IDEs. Um, but now I've got random class and I want to just run the whole project, whatever the default run is. Well, if I hit control D, like it's just going to run random class.py, but that's not actually what I want here. What I want is some kind of default method to run my project in whatever standard way it's, it's intended to run. So VS Code has the concept of a build task um, that can be customized to do whatever you need it to do. So the build task is Control Shift B to kick that off. And uh, you'll notice right here, it's saying no build task to run found, configure build task. And it's giving me some default build tasks. Now I actually don't want either of those. I don't want Ross, um, I don't, uh, you know, and I, what I'm looking for is fairly simple, so we're just going to do it by hand. If there are default build tasks for whatever thing you're trying to do, um, that prompt would have would have walked you through how to get there. But uh, we're just going to do it by hand. So I'm going to make dir .vs code, and I'm going to create a file here um, called tasks.json. And I'm actually going to copy this over from another project. I never actually type it out because there's really no reason to. Uh, this is something that works well and I just kind of copy among projects. So kind of walking through this, we have a label, we have a type, it's a shell script. Um, and then the important things are the command, Python, the args. In my case, I want it to always run main.py and then the fact that it says is default true. So you can have many build tasks, but only one of them is going to be the main build for your project. Um, if you wanted to run multiple things sort of in parallel, so every time you hit the shortcut, it runs a series of, uh, a series of different steps, then you could do multiple tasks and create a depends on attribute. That's an option so that if you wanted to say compile your program and then run it, with something like C, um, then that would be an option for you. But in this case, we just need one and we just need to run main.py. So now that I've got this and I've saved it, I can hit Control Shift B to execute the default build and I have hello world. Um, so that gives us some really cool options. You know, now you can be anywhere in the project, you can quickly pick things up and run them. Um, and you, uh, you know, and you can run multiple scripts and I've got keyboard shortcuts for all of the above. So let's, uh, let's talk like maybe a little bit more general editor tips here. So to start with, uh, let's duplicate this line and I'm not using my mouse. I'm just control C the whole line and I'm gonna get a whole uh, series of hello worlds here. Well, what if um, I wanted to replace the word world here? So the GUI way of doing it is double click, right click, change all occurrences. But uh, let's say that I don't want to use my mouse. I'm going to leave my mouse over here. I'm going to shift and right arrow and grab the word world. 
and I'm going to control F2. And I'm going to change that to umwelt. So hello, umwelt. Um, and then since we're still on the same line, I can just do the same thing over here. And I have now bulk changed all of those strings. Escape to get out of that view. Control Shift B. And now I have my series of hello umwelts uh, sitting here instead of my initial hello world. Um, believe that translates closer to uh, to universe, but anyway. So you can quickly get around. You can quickly, um, you know, again copy paste. I'm just control and down arrowing, control Z, control V. Um, you know, you'll you'll find over time that the more easily you're able to navigate around the editor without your mouse, the faster you're going to go. Um, the uh, next thing we want to do here is let's go ahead and talk about ChatGPT integration. So there are a, a number of good integrations for IDEs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen things like Copilot. Um, I wanted a direct ChatGPT integration, and I didn't want to pay very much for it. Uh, you know, most of the options out there have a monthly subscription fee, $10, $20 a month. The best option I've found so far is to use ChatGPT's API section, um, where you where you pay per use, and then to use a plugin called Genie AI here um, to to actually use that API key and integrate it into the into your IDE. So this is uh, this is just paying for API use. My experience has been that it, it doesn't end up costing very much. I think I'm spending a couple of dollars a month, um, and it, it requires you to put down like a one-time credit. You pay say ten dollars. Uh, in credits, and then you know it's just a it, it pulls from that credit balance as you use it. So the plugin itself is Genie AI. I'm going to show that here. Um, you'll see it. It's got the little lamp, Chat GPT, Genie AI. Um, the first time you try to ask it something, it's going to prompt you for an API key, and that is when you would log into your OpenAI account. Uh, go to your API, create a key, purchase some credits, etc. I'm not going to go into that. You can go Google how to get an API key. Um, but uh, but let's talk through how you use this. So the the first thing I want to do here, uh, I'm actually going to use this to key up our TensorBoard demo. Can you create a loop that builds what looks like a fake training run? Um, for a PyTorch script. And it's going to sit here and give you, you know, the, the answers we all expect from ChatGPT at this point. Um, a good run through of a, a fake training run to generate some data. I'm going to hit stop responding because I don't need that second part. I really just need this. All right. So what do we want next? Well, I think out of the box, control shift B again, it's going to give me, uh, you know, my, my main.py. Um, and I've got all of my fake training data. So cool. Um, but what if you don't want to open this window? Again, the, the theme here has been doing things without having to click around. So if I wanted to ask it to add something to this, I can control A. To select all, um, and this is this is kind of where this plugin gets kind of cool. You, anything you select will be sent along with whatever question you ask. So it's pretty easy, even if you've got hundreds of lines in the file, to just Control A, grab the whole context, grab the whole code problem you're trying to solve, and then go ask ChatGPT for some help. Um, I'm going to hit Control K as in kid, and Control Shift Seven and type, would you mind adding TensorBoard logs to this code? All right, and it's gonna pop up with a window and start giving me um, a version of the code with TensorBoard. While we're here, I'm sure I'm going to need to install TensorBoard. So we're just gonna do a new file, requirements.txt. 
and uh, I'm going to do Pi Torch and Tensor Board. I just know this is going to take a few minutes and I don't want to wait for it. And I'm going to launch a new terminal and pip install dash r requirements. All right, and it can, uh, oh, torch. Always mess that up. All right, so it's off doing its thing. Let's go back and see how uh, how our AI is, is doing. So it, uh, it gave me a new block of code. And I'm going to come back over here. And we could do the next bit a couple of different ways. So um, we, you know, we've got our fake training loop. We've got our, um, you know, what if I wanted to generate some documentation? I could obviously either do the same thing, Control A, Control K, Control Shift 7, and that's going to um, launch, you know, another question. Um, but you can also just continue to talk to it here. So, you know, hey, would you mind writing some documentation for this code? And honestly, if you're only using um, ChatGPT today in a non-conversational way, if you're asking it for very specific things and then not using it to iterate on those, you're probably not using it to its full potential. This is a really good way um, to, you know, sort of help get it to build something for you um, or help you build something and then, you know, iterate through changes you'd like, documentation, whatever you want it to do. Um, so anyway, we just generated some code. Looks like my requirements down here are finished installing. Um, so let's see if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to see that data. So I'm going to do control, actually, I'm going to change this to a thousand runs. And again, control shift P to get into the command palette. And I want to launch TensorBoard. And you can also just launch TensorBoard to browser. You can go look at it and, you know, launch it on the command line and, and use it some other way. Um, but I find this to be a really clean way to have everything in one place. So again, I'm on TensorBoard. I'm gonna hit control shift B again to build my project. Um, up here, I've already got reload data. And I can start to see my, my fake training run here um, populate an accuracy and a loss number here in TensorBoard, all right here in my IDE without ever, uh, without ever going anywhere. And if you haven't used TensorBoard before, uh, basically you declare a writer and then you add scalars to, uh, you know, you'll notice the scalar is loss slash, loss slash train and accuracy slash train. And uh, that is exactly what we see here and here. So, all right, so we've covered TensorBoard, we've covered uh, ChatGPT integration. Um, let's do Git and, uh, and also talk about, um, Let's see, let's go ahead and do git. So you'll notice there's this helpful window over here, source control, and it shows you six pending changes. One of the things I love about um, VS Code is its git view. Um, if you've used git and other IDEs, I, I personally feel like this is the best one. Um, you know, right now it's not showing me a lot of, uh, it's showing me sort of a whole block. That's gonna be a pretty, pretty standard view. Um, but let's let's walk through quickly committing and, and making changes. So right over here, I can click stage all changes. And I don't always do this. Actually, I want to let's let's unstage. Let's go ahead and I do not want events uh, to show up. So let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to do a dot git ignore. And git ignore is basically just a good way to say, I don't want to track something, so I have no desire to commit things from the runs folder to git. So, yeah. 
let's see, no such branch main. Oh, uh, it is probably a branch master. Let's see what you don't like. And this is where, you know, hey, something's not working right. Let's, let's go back to terminal. Let's see, let's see. Yep, git add, yep, git new file, git rm cached. And this just removes it. Fine, I'll do force. All right, so this no longer shows those as changes. Um, they're still there. I didn't actually remove anything. But uh, now, because they've been excluded in Git Ignore, and I just removed them from my staging, we uh, we are not picking up runs. We're just picking up our code and our um, task.json. And I'm also going to stage Git Ignore. So you'll notice we've got a little message prompt here. Uh, so this is where I can say initial commit for the VS code template Python. Uh, project and I could click the commit button but uh, that wouldn't be with today's theme so I can also just hit control enter and everything's committed to push we go back to the command palette control shift P git push and uh, obviously if you wanted to configure a keyboard shortcut for that specifically you could go do the same process we did for Python open the keyboard shortcut editor find the command and do a, a single line view for me, control shift P and git push is, is simple enough. And then finally, let's talk about Jupyter. Uh, and I'm not gonna go into a ton of details here, uh, just that you can do a test.py b. And VS Code out of the box understands what it is um, and is able to run it. So it's going to, uh, let's see, install. Yep, that's fine. So I think I, I covered a few useful tricks here for, uh, for using VS Code with Python. You know, we've talked about AI integration. We've talked about uh, TensorBoard. We've talked about, you know, being able to do a lot of the normal things that you would do on the command line. Um, one of the reasons that I've been experimenting more with VS Code lately, and I'm, I'm usually a PyCharm user, um, but it is some of these extra features that have really pulled me back towards VS Code. You know, something like PyCharm is an incredibly smooth environment. Um, I really love working with it, but to get uh, AI features, you have to pay for an extra, you know, an extra monthly license. Um, to get, uh, you know, integration with your Jupyter Notebooks. You have to pay for the pro version. Um, you know, you're, it's a really, really good IDE, but you are paying a little bit of a premium to use some of the extra features. I mean, that's not something I, I'm comfortable doing right now. So for me, being able to take VS Code, bundle in those extra features via plugins, um, and then sort of bring back some of the smoother things that I liked about um, PyCharm have made this a winning environment to work in. Um, just my take, hopefully some of what I've covered here has been useful to you and uh, helps you along your Python and or VS Code journey.